Okay, guys. So we have completed the front end HTML, CSS, JavaScript part, and doing projects with that, like e-commerce, and also you started a bird app. You didn't feel it because it's tough, and you will not understand. If you want that code shared, I'll share that code. And if you want a class to separate, like a separate class to understand that code, I'll do that. But next, we'll move on to React. What is React? You may heard in your college or in your workplace, or whenever you are working, or if you are applying for any job, there will be a term called React or Angular. So what these are? So these are the frameworks of JavaScript. In today's world, JavaScript is not used in the front end development. Yeah, it used. But in the tech industry, in the industry level, it's not been used. Or maybe some startups use, but nobody actually uses that. Maybe some rare companies. So then Facebook launches a framework of JavaScript that is called React. There are also another library, another framework that is Angular, but it's all about trend. Now, React is also not so popular. Today's most popular framework is Next.js. So it's all about trend. It's all about upgradation. First, there was a time in 2015, 2020, then the time of Angular. Angular was very famous. The openings of Angular was huge, in a huge amount. But next, it comes to React. React has lots of opening. You can still see a lots of opening of React. But now also the demands of Next.js and TypeScript, that is not JavaScript, it's TypeScript. That's the version of JavaScript where you can define the types, that is called TypeScript, is now popular. But it all has the basics of JavaScript. So you need to know JavaScript, then move on to React, Next, and for Angular or any. Okay. So every framework have their own documentation. So, in tech world, you need to know how to read the documentation. So, in React, we'll re learn from the documentation itself and we'll build on VS Code, the coding part will learn here, but we'll try to read out how a documentation has been made. Okay. This is a quick start. Uh, okay, I'm just going to it, but don't, if you don't understand here, don't worry, we'll go deeper, but you just, I'm just going through what is React. Okay. So welcome to React documentation. This page will give you introduction to an 80% of React concept that we'll see on a daily basis. Okay. It is just give you all uh, concepts. Uh, what is the present? So creating a nesting components. How can we create a nest components? React apps are made out of components. A component is a piece of UI that is called user interface. You, I, I, I think you guys know what is UI. That is user interface. And what is UX? That is user experience. You may have heard about UI UX developer. That is fig they, they work on a prototype. They work on a Figma. Okay. Prototype. And they work on Figma. There is no code. There are no code developers. Okay. So up to this part is clear. Next. Uh, so here you are creating component. Component. Okay. So so it's saying function my button return I am a button. Okay, 
Now that's your declare my button. You can nest it into another component. Now you got you are declaring a button function. Now you want to nest it in another component. So how you do that? You can say export default function my app return div welcome to my app. That is the my button my button that is a button that is a function and you are calling the button okay and is a div okay the div ends. So that's how you call components in React. So this is the code. You can say function my function return button. I have a button. Okay, this is the button you have created so in the function my button. Okay. And next you are calling export default function my app that is returning welcome to my app. Okay. Clear. Clear this part. Next. The export default keywords, especially the main com explicit, actually, sorry, the export default keywords specify the main concept in the file. Okay. Whatever it's written in the file, if it's a code is here, you need to export whatever it's written in the code. Okay. This is the how to structure of React component codes. If you're not familiar with some piece of JavaScript in the MDR JavaScript, get information. So you can go through that if you want. Uh, go to react.dev uh, for reading the documentation. You also need to read that on your own. You'll learn whatever you're reading. Okay. Right. Reading more. Okay. I'll understand you and you need to try it out. Okay. Writing markup with JSX. So in in last you use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But in React, we don't use HTML. HTML, we use JSX. This is a formatting of HTML, consists of HTML and JavaScript together. Okay. The things are same, it's just a name difference. Not same too much, but it's different. We'll tell you what is the difference. It just converts the HTML in the component. You look like the component, you've seen the component here. This how it converts the HTML code. Okay. The, the markup synthesis you have seen our is called JSS is optional, but most React project use JSS for its convenience. All of the tools you recommend for local development support JSS out of the box because they are giving an environment and support the JSS. Okay. JSS is stricter than HTML. We have to choose tags like BR. Your component also written multiple JSS tags. We have to wrap them into a shared parent like a div on an empty div. You can use this at the opening of the component or you can use div. Okay. In special is like in industry people you prefer to use this. You prefer to use this format. Okay. Here you can see return. Okay. If you have a lot of HTML to port to JSX, you can use online converter. Okay. There's an online converter where you will put the HTML, they will convert the HTML to JSX. Okay. In React, you specify a CSS class to class name. It works the same way as the HTML class attributes. Okay, image class and avatar, that's the same thing when you are doing it HTML. Then you write a CSS tool for separate files, dot avatar, border radius, and you new node Okay. Yeah. React does not prescribe how you add. Uh, okay, you can see uh, this is the class name avatar and this is the styling of the avatar bottom. It's 50 percent. So they, they have done not prescribe how you add CSS file in the simplest. You'll add a link tag to your HTML file. If you use a build tool or framework, consult its documentation to learn how to add CSS to your file. So here you will not use link. 
Here we'll use import and the file name, whatever the file name. If it's app.css, then it will be a styling file. Okay. There's nothing like style sheet here. You can just import files. It's all the same for everywhere. Nothing specified for a styling page. Okay. So displaying data. JSON lets you put markup in JavaScript. Kali doesn't let you escape back in JavaScript so that you can embed some variable from your code and display it to the user. For example, user.name. So the user.name, if there's an object called user, the user object, and there is present the name, so that user name is uh, alloc, let's suppose. So the user dot name will be alloc. Okay. The user dot name equal to R. Okay. You can also escape in JavaScript from JS attributes, but you have to use the curly base instead of quotes. For example, class avatar passes the avatar string as a string, as a CSS class, but source user dot URL read the JavaScript user dot image URL variable value and then passes the value as a source attribute. So whatever I have said, this will give the image URL like the image attribute. Okay. You give the image you got okay. So if there's any confusion, you can say image. Okay, just submit user image. You got okay. We can put more complex inside the JSS values for string concatenations. You can see this. We are using const user as an object name, KD lemon, image URL, image size, it's for default function profile, return, username, class name, source, all style, width, user.image size, height, user.image size. So you have giving the user size image size 90. Okay. Now, for example, style is not a special filter, but a regular object inside as a style. JSS curly version. You can use the style attributes when your style depends on JavaScript variables. Okay. When uh, your style, you can see in the above example, style is not a syntax, not a special syntax, but a regular curly basis object syntax inside a style. JSS curly version. You can use the style attribute when your style depends on JavaScript. When your style depends on JavaScript variables, you can use the style. Okay. You can use the present. This is a particular JSS curly. A regular JSS curly basis. You can use the style attribute when your style depends on JavaScript variables. You can use style attribute on your style in the JavaScript. Okay. Next is conditional rendering. In React, there is no special. In React, there is no special syntax for writing condition. Instead, you'll use the same technique as you use when writing regular JavaScript code. For example, you can use if statement to conditionally. So it is the same thing. It's just the if and else statement that you have learned in JavaScript. That's why I'm saying JavaScript is important because it's all about JavaScript. It's just a framework. It's how it's all about writing the code in a other format. But the same, the syntax and all is same. You can say let constant is if if is logged in constant is equal to admin panel. Else constant is a login form. So it's saying if it's logged in, then constant to go to admin panel, and if it's not logged in, then constant to login form. Okay. And all the contents are called the best way to con all the contents will be loaded here. Okay. So it is it will go to admin panel. Admin 
panel and this will go to login. Okay, and this is a website. So this is how it works. This will give the website content. Okay. So next is if you prefer more compactor, you can use conditional operator. Unlike it, it's it works. You can use admin if it's logged in. Go to admin panel or if it's not logged in, go to login. You can just use conditional operator. If it's logged in, then admin. Or if it's logged in, not logged in, then login. Okay. First, it goes to if it's logged in, yes, then it goes to admin panel. And if it's not logged in, it goes to login. When you don't need else branch, you can use a shorter logical syntax. If it's logged in, go to admin panel. So you can use like if it's logged in, then go to admin panel or there's nothing else statement is there. Okay. Rendering list will rely on JavaScript features like for loop and array map function to render list of components. For example, let's say you have an error array of products. So const products title cabbage id1, title garlic id2, title apple id3. Inside your component, use the map function to transform an array of products into an array of element items. So const item list items is equal to product.map, product, ki, li key, product.id, product.id. Okay, return list items. So here I will make an object, create an object and list all the items. Inside your comment, use the map function to transform an array of products into an array of list items. So you can use the map function here. It's like product.map. So this map will create the object into a list item. Okay. Then give the give the output in list not object okay so and you can say layer is a list return list item so it is return all the items all the items in list all the items in list okay notice how eli has a key for each item at least you should pass a string of a or a number that uniquely identifies that item among its siblings. Usually a key should be coming from your data, such as database ID. React uses your keys to know what happened if you are later insert, delete, or record items. So you can just give it's just talking, you can just give the ID of database so that React use that and give more data. Okay, so const product is like the object. An export default function shopping list. So we're using the shopping list here. Cons list items will products on map product as well to product.id, style, color, product is food, magnet, dark green. This is the shopping list. This will export, will export later. And dot product title, style product that is if it's food, then it's magneta. And if it's not food, this is dark green. So if it's food, it's magneta. If it's not food, this cabbage garlic. This is dark green. Okay, so product dot title. You can say there is present is food false, is food false. So it's given in the date object. So it just checking the object if this food is if it's food is true, the magnet, if it's false, then the okay, then product dot title. 
pin in the product of title, what is the product of title, and then list the items. Okay. Responding to events. You can respond to events by declaring event. Okay, it's is it clear right now? Is it clear right? Uh, because uh, those are not fruit, then this is just dark green. And if it's fruit, so color magnetor. Okay. And here you can see product name. This is a product title. Product title. Okay. And here you can see we're listing the items. List of product in list in list okay this part is clear Responding to events. You can respond to events by declaring event handler function inside your components. So you can respond in your event using the event handler. So function my button, function handle click, allowed you click me, you can on click handle click. So you are using handle click and whenever you, you, it's click handle click, the screen changes and goes to you click me. Okay. Handle me in the and then the screen changes, you clicked. And this is done. Uh, and when you are clicking the button, click. Okay. So this will happen when you click the button. This will change the to you click me as an handle click and it will show an allow you click me. Okay. Let's see here. So often you'll add a component. Often we will want your component to remember some information on this page. For example, maybe you want to count the number of times this button click. To add this add, add state to your component, import use state from here. So if you want to, if you want to uh, have a local storage and have the have save all the states you have done. If you want to increase the count of one to three, it needs to use use state from React. So you just need to give import use state from React. Okay, you just need to give this. Import use import use state from React. Okay. Now you can declare a state variable inside your component function my comp function my button const count set count use state zero. So you are saying count and set count is equal to zero. So you are setting the count is equal to zero. So next is you'll get two things from your state. You'll get two things from your state, the current state count. Uh, you'll get two things from your state, the current state count and a function that lets you update its state count. You can give them any names, but the conversion is to write something and save something. Okay. Uh, so it'll get used at the constant count and if set count, you can give the names, the conversion, and something. Set. So it is like Whatever you did, give is count or nothing. So you just need to give it something if it's count. And next thing that needs to be have a set. And then set and then whatever you have written, set count. Okay.
so you can say function my button cons count comma set count use set is equal to zero function handle click set count is equal to count plus one so when you are using the handle click the count of the button increases set count is equal to count plus one so you are returning on click handle click clicked count times so this count will be given that dynamical value so so whenever you are clicking and clicking it it will just get updated so you are using the use state function so that's why it will get updated when you are clicking okay React will call, call, call your component function again. That so input use turn from the app, export default from my app. I return counters that are separate. Okay, my button. Here you can see. Here you can see you are using you are using import use state from React. So export default function my app counters that update separately. So it is two buttons. Okay, counters that update separately. So those both button will up, update separately. It will not give like if I update one button, it will be updated. So next, here you can see function my button. And function minus count set count use state function and then click set count count plus one because just set count use state is zero so it click zero times button on click handle click click count times so it will show the count times okay okay then we can do that like send when say click zero times because the state is zero so if I just clicked it click one times click one times it will check like it is check separately okay that you can see four five six seven eight six, seven, eight, nine. You can say it will change this dynamically and it doesn't depend on each other button. So it's two buttons, different buttons and working differently. Right? It's not depending on one another. Okay. So that's up to today's class. From next class, we'll learn react hooks okay so thank you for joining um uh, we'll comment down all the problems you are facing in any concept i'll try to make a video or give it on a like class solve it out class in the next solve it out in the next class i'll try that uh i hope you understand that and if you have any doubt or if you question or comment down and comment down in the youtube okay thank you